What's going on guys, my name is Michael and here I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now this was going to be my main iPhone, my daily driver that I use every single day. I bought this expecting this would be my final iPhone this year until I went into the Apple store and I held the iPhone 12 mini and I almost fell in love with this phone. Uh, not only because of the size, but also because of how good everything is on this phone compared to the iPhone 12 Pro and how much of an iPhone experience you can get for so much cheaper when compared to the Pro model iPhones. So in this video, I just wanna talk about these two phones a little more and possibly why I might end up ditching my iPhone 12 Pro Max for Apple's cheapest flagship iPhone this year, the iPhone 12 mini. Let's go ahead and get started. So the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch OLED display and the iPhone 12 mini has a tiny 5.4 inch OLED display packed into this tiny body. The 12 mini has a resolution of 2340 by 1080, which makes up for a pixel per inch count of 476. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a resolution of 2778 by 1284, which makes a pixel per inch count of 458. So it is a little more pixel rich on the iPhone 12 mini just when it comes to density, but you are still getting more pixels on the bigger iPhone, obviously. It's just a little bit more dense uh, on the iPhone 12 mini. However, that one upside for the pixel density is where it stops for the iPhone 12 mini because the iPhone 12 Pro Max is going to be taking over in terms of every other spec from here on out. So um, where the iPhone 12 mini has four gigabytes of RAM, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has six gigabytes, uh, where the iPhone 12 mini only goes up to 600 25 nits of typical brightness, the iPhone 12 Pro Max can go up to 800. However, when you are watching HDR content, both displays can go up to a maximum of 1200 nits. The build quality on these phones couldn't be farther apart. The 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max have a etched matte glass finish on the back as well as a very durable stainless steel frame which is going to uh, prevent scratches and dents if you drop the phone. And the iPhone 12 mini is the complete opposite end of the spectrum, um, even down to the camera lenses. So where the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max have a glossy camera area, the 12 mini has a matte camera area. And where the 12 Pro Max has a matte finish uh, glass, the 12 and 12 mini have a regular uh, sticky, shiny glass. And where the iPhone 12 Pro has stainless steel, the iPhone 12 and 12 mini have aluminum. Some people honestly might prefer this. The aluminum um, has more of a matte finish instead of the shiny, sticky feel of the aluminum. And also the uh, glossy glass instead of the matte glass. Um, some people might like this because it's able to stick to your fingers more and people can actually get more of a grip on this. So I guess it just comes down to personal preference but uh, the iPhone 12 Pro definitely does use more premium materials, but it comes down to what you want to hold in your hand all day. So on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, you will notice the speakers are a lot better. And obviously that comes with a larger phone. The more air that you have to move around inside the chassis of the phone, the better sound quality you're gonna get. But I was really surprised at how quiet the iPhone 12 mini got when compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I have the normal iPhone 12 Pro, which is um, a size somewhere in between these phones. And really it didn't sound that different in terms of loudness uh, to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But then when I listen to the iPhone 12 mini, the 12 mini really sounds like it's quiet. So I guess that's one of the downsides of having less air to move around. Um, if we look at the bottom of these phones, you can see that the 12 Pro Max has uh, more speaker grills uh, even than the iPhone 12 mini. So um, less air is able to move out of the speaker and uh, that's why you're gonna get reduced sound quality on the smaller iPhone. So for your color options, I honestly prefer the color choices for the Pro models better as I just like the look of the matte glass. But for the Pro models, you get Pacific Blue, Silver, Graphite, and Gold. Um, my least favorite is probably the Gold iPhone. And then for the iPhone 12 and 12 mini, you get White, Black, Red, Green, and Blue. Um, probably my least favorite in that is the Blue iPhone 12. To me, it just looks really cheap and it kind of looks like a toy iPhone. I really don't like the Blue finish. Um, no offense to anyone if they bought the blue iPhone 12. Um, it's really just not my jam this year. I much prefer the clean look of the white or black iPhone 12. So now to talk about the cameras, because these are probably um, the biggest areas of the spec sheet where you'll see the biggest difference. So the main lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max is bigger than the iPhone 12 mini. However, I really don't see um, evidence of that in everyday shots. Um, both shots that I take from the 12 mini and the 12 from the main lens Although the 12 Pro Max may have better results in very low light, um, the shots that you're gonna get from the 12 mini main camera and the 12 Pro Max main camera 
are relatively the same. And speaking about the same, the ultra wide angle camera on both of these phones are identical. So they both get deep fusion for more detail on the ultra wide camera and they both have literally the same optics and the same sensor. So the ultra wide shots on both these phones are going to be identical. And now this is where we get into where we're going to differentiate these phones. So as you can see here, the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max will have an extra sensor and an extra camera. So the extra camera is a telephoto lens that uh, is better for portrait modes and it's more of a prime lens look. It's more of a zoomed in look. The iPhone 12 Pro is more of a 50 millimeter equivalent and the 12 Pro Max is more of a 65 millimeter equivalent. I really do like shooting on the telephoto lens, although it's not as good in low light as the main lens. And then since we are speaking about low light, this LiDAR sensor also helps in low light when taking portrait mode shots. So we just get a whole bunch of uh, little camera improvements all over the experience. We do get a couple software restrictions. So the iPhone 12 can only record Dolby Vision HDR in 4K 60, and the iPhone 12 Pro can record Dolby Vision HDR at 4K 60. So a little bit of a difference there. That may be because the iPhone 12 Pro has more RAM than the iPhone 12, but uh, the camera systems are pretty much the same. And if you don't want the LiDAR sensor or the telephoto camera, you're still getting a very, very capable shooter on the iPhone 12 mini. Okay, so at this point in the video, I probably sound a little bit crazy. I've listed literally everything that's better about the iPhone 12 Pro Max over the 12 mini. So why is my SIM card in the 12 mini? And well, it's simply because I can do this. I can hold the phone in one hand. If I need to reach the very top left corner of my iPhone, guess what? I can do that. So um, I haven't had an iPhone that I can hold in one hand and type comfortably with one hand and reach all the way over to the left edge with one hand. This is just such a breath of fresh air and it feels like I don't need to be using my iPhone as much now. When I'm using my iPhone 12 Pro Max, it kind of feels like a tablet. It's a phablet, a phone tablet, a very, very big phone. As you can see here, it's, it's really hard. It's almost impossible for me to reach the top left corner or even reach my thumb across to the left edge. And that's one of the reasons I want to go with a smaller phone this year. This phone is so heavy and such a chunker inside your pocket. And for less money, you can get 95% of the features in a smaller, lighter, more convenient package. And you still get all of the key features this year with the iPhone 12 lineup, such as MagSafe. So I love how my MagSafe wallet perfectly attaches to the back of this 12 mini. It feels a lot more comfortable in the hand when it's on the 12 mini uh, as compared to the 12 Pro Max. You can see here it fits perfectly along the edges. Um, although this leather wallet is a little bit expensive, I really think it's worth it just because of how um, how good the craftsmanship is. You can see here, it's actually a little bit harder to get off the iPhone 12 mini because of that more sticky glass, like I said earlier in the video. So if I have to pull it off, it's kind of hard. And now I'll grab the iPhone 12 Pro Max and because of this frosted glass, it slides around a lot easier. So that's another upside of the uh, glossy glass on the 12 mini. Your MagSafe accessories are going to stay a little more secure. So for a lot less money, what kind of iPhone experience can you get on the iPhone 12 mini compared to the Pro Max? Well, it's a pretty feature rich experience. You still get an OLED display, a beautiful OLED display that is very rich with pixels. I cannot see individual pixels like I could on last year's iPhone 11. You get 5G, which no other iPhone has. You even get millimeter wave 5G if you live in the US, even on this iPhone 12 mini. You also get the A14 Bionic chip. Like I said, the only difference between the mini and the Pro is the amount of RAM in that chip. But I don't think on day-to-day -day usage, unless you're a very, very heavy user, I don't think most people are going to notice the difference in RAM. And you also get one of the absolute best main cameras that Apple has ever come up with. Now, Apple's marketing really tries to tell you that the bigger sensor in the Pro Max is worth it and that it's 48% larger. It's not 48% larger than this sensor. It's 48% larger than the iPhone 11 Pro. And the shots that you're going to get out of this camera are so similar to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I just don't think that the Pro Max in terms of the camera and the main sensor is worth it to upgrade. Some people may like the extra telephoto camera and the LiDAR scanner and the fact that you can record uh, Dolby Vision at a higher frame rate. 
but honestly, those are a couple very small tweaks that only the pro people would notice. So this camera system and the overall experience on this iPhone is top notch and what you're missing out on really is not that important. So when I'm using the 12 mini, I find that I'm using my iPad a little bit more just because I used to take my 12 Pro Max and use that for watching videos on the couch and in bed. But now with the 12 mini, I find the screen is just a little bit too small. So now I'm using my iPad Pro uh, mainly for that. So you'll notice your use case change um, when you're using a smaller phone more. And since we're in 2020 and we're all using our phones so much, I think it's kind of a good idea to maybe um, have a smaller phone, step back from everything that's happening online, and maybe not pick up your iPhone as much. And with the iPhone 12 mini, that's really what this is telling you to do. It's not as big of a screen, so you might not want to watch a whole movie on it. You might not want to binge all your YouTube on it, and you might not want to listen to as much audio on it because of the smaller speakers. So everything about this phone really is trying to miniaturize your iPhone experience. And that's really what I like. I still haven't 100% decided if I'm sending this phone back to Apple. So tell me in the comments below if you want me to do a follow-up video telling you exactly which phone I ended up keeping for the long run. But if you agree with some of the points I made in this video, tell me in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.